The story begins with introducing the factor of legends in the video game world and one of them is none other than the seven stars who is famous for being one of the mightiest players ever existing in the world. This man single-handedly dominated the final dungeon's mission which is Heaven's Battle alone writing his name on the highest leaderboard on the game through the process only 30 minutes into his playtime. Meanwhile, Kai Zing purchases six units of limited edition VR headsets in the first release with the hope of scalping to arrange the urgent hospital bills of his little sister, even though he has to pay his tuition payment in full to continue his education. He prioritizes his sister the most because of a certain reason, the sister whom he promised that he will never play video games ever again as he will keep her company. A shady guy promised to pay Kai Zing the scalping amount for his six units of VR headsets, but instead of fulfilling the deal, the guy plays with his trust and holds him accountable for scalping after paying him less than they agreed on. When Kai Zing starts reacting to his betrayal, the shady guy continues to yell out in the public claiming that he is getting cheated by a scalper of some sort and is in need of help. As soon as the people around them heard the whole commotion, they start coming after Kai Zing as he stood right there fearing for his life as he takes out one of the headsets to prove that he isn't a scalper. Frustrated and anxious, Kai Zing calls his friend Tan Hua needing his help with selling the rest of the two headsets, and he suggests that he will look for a buyer so he can keep the other one since anyone can exchange the currency in-game with real money. Another thing revealed in the conversation is that the seven star is none other than Kai Zing himself, but he currently has a traumatic experience regarding gaming because his sister had an accident because of it. And this time our guy holds on to the game not for himself but in order to save his sister. The moment he enters the game Ancient Gods, he notices that his luck has changed as he ends up rolling 99 instead of 0 for some reason. The change of luck felt so shocking to Kai Zing that he sat down flabbergasted as the rewards start to come through on their own. As a reward, he receives Zio Man as his dedicated guide assistant which gets him blushing hard on his own and it seems that he is eager to keep her as the assistant from there. He didn't only get Zio Man as his assistant but also, but gets 9 other selective rewards rewarding him with various overpowered stuff from the collection. The lack of limitations for overpowered rewards starts feeling unfathomable to him which only made him feel like he is currently in a fever dream. Soon Kai Zing gets the option of selecting the Guardian of Giant Mu when it comes to character, creation race and before Zio Man was about to introduce himself to the newbie village, he suddenly hears his doorbell ring which he thinks will be his mother as he was expecting. Nobody else. The moment he opens the door, Kai Zing starts feeling that something wrong is going to happen as he gets knocked down on the ground because of the force made by the outsider behind the door. Also, the fact that it is none other than Zhang Lin Yao makes the situation more uncanny which makes him realize that Tan Hua must have posted the news to their classmate group which led him to his house suddenly. Knowing that Zhang Lin Yao is a brute who is famous for his strong arming, Kai Zing states that the headset has already been booked but it doesn't stop him at all from having his hands all over the headset. The next scene shows Tan Hua trying his best to convince the mother of Kai Zing as she is massively worried about her son not staying in their house. But he ends up getting slapped by Kai Zing for blabbering bullshit to his mother and he claims that he will go back to the house after a few days so she shouldn't be worrying about him for no reason. The whole situation ends as Kai Zing has predicted as he ended up getting beaten up pretty badly by Zhang Lin Yao and also lost the VR headset at the same time. At first, the guy was asking to him saying that he will keep the headset with him for a week but when Kai Zing insists that he will be needing it, things turn sour in an instant at that moment. Since he can't find people and get revenge on his enemy for the time being, he decides to fill in the missing money in his mom's bank card first which is more important at the moment. Kai Zing makes Tan Hua pay for one of his VR for leaking the news trying to help him and decides to be accountable for the other half as he has some responsibility as well. But the incident doesn't let Kai Zing back down and he promises to beat Zhang Lin Yao for stealing his VR bounded with a special account with great value. Tan Hua notices that Kai Zing seems more determined than ever which makes him want to play the game as well as he complains the customer service about his gaming capsule not arriving yet. After logging into Ancient Gods once again, Kai Zing was more than happy to see Zio Man as his assistant once again. But the happiness doesn't last for more than a minute as it loses the ability to activate the visibility because of the lack of binding power. Kai Zing understands the situation since the account and helmet are bound together but the issue doesn't end there at all. The moment Kai Zing tries to create an account, he finds himself in a big dilemma as he can't choose human race characters. Not just the human race, but even he is forbidden to access any mammals or beasts that were listed in the game. The situation gets deeper as none of the races in the whole world is available for him to access other than jellyfish. He decides to choose the jellyfish as he has no other choices in his hand. Instead of waking up in the ocean, Kai Zing wakes up in midair as some seagull was carrying him with its beak. 
Everything including Kai Zing's profile picture is quite weird as he only has one unknown skill, and it is a complete mystery how he will get out of his current situation. After setting up the same username as 7 stars with the help of the game's guide, he learns that he is in a much worse situation than he thinks as he is in a state of bleeding because of the stunning heat of the sun. The idea of using his unknown skill makes him act like a parasite which can let him survive by parasitizing other beings through his tentacles which gives him the ability to control the seagull that was carrying him making him feel like a genius. As his first plan succeeds, he thinks of controlling beasts and monsters as much as possible to rise above everyone around him with his parasitism skill. Also, not only he can control the bird, but he can also switch to the seagull's perspective as he is living in its body. But as he doesn't know how to control a bird's body, Kai Zing drops down flying on the ground inside the range of the newbie village making him the first player in the entire server to reach the place as he gets the rewards for it. On the other hand, Janglin Yao was, using all of his items in his body to their fullest finishing off countless higher level enemies on his own not even caring about the boss monster of the area named the demon. See Bolgen as he slashes through him. Even after snatching away Kai Zing's account from him, he doesn't forget to curse at him as he receives a godly artifact. No matter who came in front of him everything continued to get mowed down by him as if the enemies are ants compared to his overpowered abilities. Even though all of the abilities were given by the account of Kai Zing, Jang Lin Yao keeps on thinking of him as superior of him calling himself better than him when the truth is rather the opposite of it. When his first expedition completes, a godly artifact dropped in front of him which is the helmet of an anonymous commander that will help him to cover his face properly from the enemies and allies. When Jang Lin Yao reaches Qingxi village, he notices people complaining about the game for its difficulty and some of the gorgeous women approach him with the hope of getting his help with their tasks making him feel like he has made an achievement by robbing Kai Zing's hope. Meanwhile, Kai Zing himself was having a hard time holding up after falling along with the seagull which results in the death of the bird. But the trouble doesn't end up there as some poison ants chase after him turning his experience into a nightmare. As the seagull is now dead and he sees no chance of saving himself, Kai Zing runs away from the countless ant army trying to save his life as the parasitism won't work now. Kai Zing starts getting tortured by the bunch of poisonous ants but can't do anything in return because his damage rate is too low. His attacks do not even get placed on the ants bodies making them ineffective only to get the attack fired back at himself. Also, his skill parasitism ends up being useless against the creature because of its high level of vitality, and he ends up getting poisoned by a massive bite while groaning in pain on the ground. Then before losing consciousness, Kai Zing realizes he can only use his skill against ornamental creatures like him, but it doesn't work on ants because of their true monster self and higher attribute and levels. But he ends up releasing himself from the grasp of his attacking opponent by using his skill on a dead ant which acts as camouflage to the ants that are alive. The first action becomes successful as parasitism gives him an opportunity to be treated as the corpse of their kin to be transported back to the ant nest where he can find various ways to upgrade himself. But his series of bad luck doesn't just end there as the mob of ants ends up taking him to the final boss dungeon which only gets him devastated not realizing how he will beat the boss now. The dungeon of the poison ants is so poor that it doesn't even have a lamp, so Kai Zing opens up his inventory to check out his reward in boredom. He notices that he has received 1000 coins as a reward which is still nothing compared to the amount he has to return back to his mother. But the skill list available under the inventory seems worth the trouble for him as he didn't expect resurrection or teleportation ring to be on there. He receives a skill named gluttony along with the other rewards and gluttony seems to be the skill of the ant he has parasitized. He keeps on leveling up with the help of gluttony as he devours a skill named trace amount of fire poison. He realizes that he can achieve the skills of his parasitized enemies meaning the whole nest of ants can be his training ground. Now all he has to do is wait until he levels up so he can fight against the living ants, and he acts accordingly. He gets on with parasitizing the countless ant dead bodies lying around on the ground which levels him up to level 4 and manages to receive white aphid honey from beating down a living ant near the corner. Kai Zing knows that the boss must be the queen ant in the ant nest and since he is already in the nest, he thinks of meeting the monster without even thinking about the consequences as the queen can be seen eating its own people mercilessly while he gets busy skipping the quest lines to activate his new skills. Kai Zing makes his journey deep inside the nest controlling one of the dead carcasses and upon reaching the insides, he notices that hundreds of ants are roaming around carrying the piles of white aphid honey and makes up his mind to gather them to earn extra money considering that it will be valuable in future. When the agility doesn't seem enough to him, he continues to predict their attacks and move accordingly which helps him to get away from being attacked. 
he jumps down from the ant he was riding on and starts fighting countless ants with their own broken body parts as he went on slicing through each of them. It seems that his agility has matched up with his skills as he moves accordingly breaking the limbs of each of the ants which helps him soon reach level 7. It once again proves that the body of an ant can battle gods if the technique is clear and there is no absence of proper radicalization. While battling with the countless ants, he only thinks of his little sister who is bedridden in the hospital fighting with death and Kai Zing wants to do the best in the game only to see her smiling once again. When he receives various other traits by executing the groups of ants, he begins merging his abilities with one another to strengthen his weapon as he begins to venture deeper into the nest. He keeps on piling up himself with levels up to level 10 and buffing up the weapon up to 56 knives like a combo at the same time from then on. Kai Zing is hopeful for his future where he wants to battle with his enemy Zhang Lin Yao someday and he knows that it will be a win for him judging the fact that he is nothing but a dumb guy using an overpowered account for his advantage. When he leaves the game after a while to have something to eat, Tan Hua rushes into his room and pulls him over to his laptop to show him the current most high-ranking players on the server. On the list, there is a celebrity player named Kai Zhao Man who is a former idol in the industry and Kai Zing triggers a flashback where it is seen that Kai Zing met her in his previous game where he spent time with her to help her make a success in the game which formed a great relationship in them. Tan Hua thinks that the developers are investing a large sum of money to put her into bringing her fanbase into the game. But Kai Zing thinks that she might be doing it voluntarily and stops caring about it as he doesn't really belong any close to her social status. While Tan Hua is busy discussing her career path and the opportunities she has in front of her, Kai Zing gets bothered about something else as he keeps on handling the laptop roughly. Meanwhile, Kai Zing is busy thinking about something else angrily as his rival Zhang Lin Yao has changed a lot of his previously made character thinking highly of himself. The lack of respect was visible in Zhang Lin Yao's current character creation which angers Kai Zing the most. Over some lunch, Tan Hua asks him about the current top-ranked players on the server and questions him why he isn't ranked. Yet but Zing considers that getting adjusted to the mechanisms is far more important than getting ranked in the beginning as most of the players who are top-ranked right now will be squeezed out. But Tan Hua adds some interesting facts about the top-ranked players including Zhang Lin Yao, Handsome Uncle, and Perosius who are dominating the server with their extremely powerful endeavors and luck. Also, he points out that most of the community forums are filled with hate comments about 7 stars for his domination over all the other games and the fact that they are quite jealous of his skills is quite illustrated all over it. When Zing goes into rage mode after seeing all the slanders on his name, Tan Hua calms him down to lecture him about the information that he gained about the newbie tasks in the Kingxi village. It seems that despite all the danger and the difficulties, that place hardly profits any players after calculating the drop rates and cosmetic prices which makes Zing think about the items that he gained from the ant nest. After calculating the values of the items he left right inside the dungeon, he continues to drool thinking that he has made a mistake by leaving them there which makes him want to go in there once again. But before returning to his game, he noticed something uncanny about Kai Zio Man which he has seen before in his previous experience on the laptop screen, but decides to focus on his game anyways thinking it is no use reminiscing about her at all. Zing instantly finishes collecting all the items that he had previously dropped after clearing the area and faces a huge monster lurking in a dark area which makes him contemplate his life's decisions. Kai Zing gets detected by none other than the Fire Poison Queen which is hundred times over his accountable level cap which makes him realize there must be something wrong with the developers for keeping something like this in the newbie area. He knows that he should not have been discovered as the boss is quite an intelligent creature compared to the other bosses in his previous games that he faced inside the newbie area. While he was thinking about how he wants to progress through the mission with available consumables, he notices one of the ants moving right past him with a cell of white aphid honey. He instantly takes down the ant for sneaking away with it and he rushes into the boss with the honey and weapon in his hand. But instead of frustrating over the situation, he starts preparing for his upcoming battle with all he has, and the unfathomable show of his skills begins as he keeps on slashing the boss with his weapon repeatedly. But the situation goes out of control as the boss activates its reflecting ability taking him down on the ground. The attack reflection acts in the opposite direction so badly that the whole fight feels like mumbo jumbo to him noticing no magic cast at the same time. Since Kai Zing is someone who isn't ready to die without reaching his goal, he parasitizes one of the dead ants and distracts the boss by using the white aphid honey that he gained from the basic level ants because he already knows how the developers have made her blueprint from the start. As he already knows, the intelligence of the creature is on the highest level possible which is protecting its lower body by reflecting all the attacks provided by him which might take more than 10 newbie players to complete the fight. The hunger of the beast in front of him seems much bigger than his which he decides to focus on to create bait to place a successful attack every time. 
But soon he formulates that since the queen considers eating food the most prioritized activity, Zing ends up targeting its Achilles heels which makes him able to form a triangular attack based on its position giving him an upper hand against it. Zing keeps on throwing his honey particles around it to distract it at first and then places his attack based on the body part that takes the most critical damage. During the whole process, he keeps on parasitizing the dead ant bodies and throwing honey particles as baits at the creature while placing his attacks perfectly which continues to drop the health of the creature continuously. The 7 star triangular kill move soon helps him clear the boss battle by decapitating it in the end. The boss leaves Zing with a bunch of newfound rewards for him along with a level 600 gang pet egg opening a new path in the game for him to tinker with. Even though his skills leveled up, Zing was left with only one skill selection in the end which makes him select Parasitism that grants him the ability to control the targets who are in a state of dizziness from then on. Suddenly, two godly artifact falls from the sky for him to have as rewards but soon one of them disappears leaving him no choice but to agonize on his own like he has gone mad because of his midlife crisis. But Zing doesn't stand there complaining and instead, he contacts the support to find out the main reason behind the bug which caused him to face such a fate. He doesn't inform the assistant about the extra item he can see on the ground but instead, he focuses on threatening her about the video he captured of the godly artifact dropping on the ground. Zing's ruthlessness brings out the director of the game Failure's maintenance department which leaves him with another legendary skill named Symbiosis as he keeps on smiling like a cunning man. The chaos gives him the chance to upgrade gluttony and parasitism at the same time which makes him better than he was before. But when he checks out the unknown item, he has no answer for it as none of the details show up on his status board that can explain to him how it works at all revealing the list to have questions marked all over it. Even after checking out the item for a while, it only looks like a skeletal arm to Zing which makes it hard to believe for him that it can be a godly artifact as it doesn't even have attack power. Since he cannot find any clue about the artifact in his hands, the only way to look for an answer is to contact an appraiser in the city to find out more information about it. He decides to call Tan Hua who is currently in the city thinking that he might be of help when it comes to checking the coordinates of the appraiser, and also will be able to provide the information related to the job change. But when Tan Hua starts pressing the matter that he should have a promotional video made for him, it instantly gets rejected by Zing as he knows that in his current state, he will be dead in the hands of his old enemies. Before ending the call, Kai Zing decides to play a prank on him which makes Tan Hua look closely into a lady's chest as he couldn't see what's in front of him, painting him as a harasser in the end. Also, the quest option pops up which can only be done by staying inside the dungeon as he was left with a dagger that was related to the task on hand. Then Zing focuses on the quest which is available to him and as soon as he takes the boy's dagger in his grasp to see further into the quest, the half-faced boy of the storyline embraces him as he pushes the dagger into his stomach at the same time. But Zing doesn't die down in the end as he has the heart of Brave which lets him resurrect himself instantly. The process ends up revealing both branches of the story and our cunning protagonist thinks of completing the quest without even doing anything potentially as if it is a glitch in the Matrix. Kai Zing's cleverness revealed a shortcut around the task and for that, he couldn't stop laughing unbearably as he gets ready to get outside of the dark place. He looks around to make sure there isn't more to the killing plot as he grabs the dagger once again and decides to consume the skills of the queen ant and join up with his friend. But the activation fails miserably as all of its abilities are contained inside the pet egg, so he starts his journey to find Tan Hua to sell his inventory. While he is on his way, some random guy decides to attack him for fun thinking that he might be some high-level creature with great intelligence wondering that Zing might be lying to call himself a player. Kai Zing couldn't fathom someone would be brave enough to place an attack on him despite having no knowledge about his abilities. But little did he know that he wasn't the only person after him, which creates a bigger confusion between them. The guy decides to act persistent in his pursuit and he ends up burning Zing's backward by using his firepower which leads to Zing using his family-friendly mouth to curse the guy's whole family tree. The guy ends up threatening Zing with his nasty mouth which ends up being his last-minute bragging as the whole incident switches up the war mode on him. He was trying his best not to attack the idiotic guy in front of him but for his own actions. Kai Zing couldn't help but act upon his instincts. Kai Zing furiously impales the guy violently with his recently rewarded sword Fang of Hope which leads him to meet the same scammer who is the reason he is in debt right now. The guy gets out his sword and commands his female friends named Ah Lan and Ah Xiang to help him from behind as they needed to help their idiotic friend named Ah Ryuo to resurrect at once with the help of healing magic. When the guy was about to stab Kai Zing with his sword by using the battle cry named Warrior's Stab, he flips the hole. Game by jumping on one of the girls and he wraps around her nastily making the hole. 
seem crazy before the sword was about to connect with one of his limbs. Kai Zing wraps around all am like some kind of thing that we usually know about. I'm now going to disclose what it is, but you can guess already. The lust was visible on the face of the girl as Kai Zing was beginning to open his skill description of symbiosis. The girl ends up moaning which shocks both the scammer and Zing in the end as she was going through the symbiosis process. When the scammer makes a weird sigh after seeing such an expression made by the girl, he loves the most. Zing doesn't leave the situation to make a joke about his feeling which leads to him sticking on the girl's head as he finishes the symbiosis process properly. Before he was about to rush into his enemy once again, the whole plot of the scene changes as Kai Zing places himself on the head of the girl which gets his enemy to stutter on his own as he doesn't find an answer to what to do next. The guy couldn't help but wonder what has happened to her as she was looking at him differently and Zing takes the situation to his advantage as he makes a huge seven-star god fist on his chin making him fly direct into the sky. But he doesn't stop there as he grabs the magic stick of all land and makes a home run hitting the floating guy's head as he slams down on the ground. Zing now knows how to get used to his new ability to control others imagining what he could do if he could use the same power on his main account. Then he begins questioning the scammer how he managed to come out on the top of the leaderboard. And it leads to Zing getting on with the deal with the suspicious guy only to give him a checkmate in the end. Even though he explains himself as a proper businessman, Kai Zing already knows what he does to people and no matter what kind of deal he is about to place in front of him, it wasn't going to work anyways. Zing ends up healing the guy to gain his trust to step forward with his plan as he now can control the girl who has the healing attributes as well and the guy instantly begins asking to check out all of his skill attributes first. When the guy tries his best to pry on the matter and take a look at his attributes, Kai Zing starts beating him up to a pulp and keeps on healing him again and again. When it goes on for a while, Zing uses his parasitism on him and after getting control of his body, he ends up releasing all the items that he has on him while leaving only the underwear. When the guy is in his underwear having no way to get out of his troubling situation, Kai Zing knows what to do with his items as he keeps on drooling on his own knowledge that he will make a bag stealing the items. Zing steals all of the items in front of his girlfriend and then takes control of her gorgeous body once again as he makes a call to Tan Hua feeling as if he has gone missing for quite some time for now. He notices that Tan Hua is being chased by the woman on the horse whom Zing made him play a prank against. Even though Tan Hua is currently in trouble, he doesn't avoid the fun as he was guiding her to the place where the ruckus was created around a magic pet while drinking a healing potion to cope with her beating in the meantime. Kai Zing seems impressed by the fact that the woman behind him can throw a triple fire arrow with the help of her godly artifact at once. But things turn sour for our little man Zing as soon as he finds out that the magic pet is none other than him after checking out the coordinates of his own location. When he was standing on his own broken hearted, his true enemy calls for him from behind and he is forced to make a reply by noticing that the person is none other than his biggest enemy Zhang Linyao Aka Dazzling Sun. Zhang Linyao walks up to him demanding to know if he knows about him as he took off his helmet which made his popularity grow out of proportion in a short amount of time. He thinks that his interactions will be easier with any females around him but as Kai Zing knows about his truth already, he decides to use the body that he is using to his advantage so he can bicker with his enemy for a while. When Zing takes control of the situation by acting like a girl, Zhang Linyao gets mad at him but decides not to push the situation, so he only asks him about the whereabouts of the monster who made the ruckus while threatening him with his sword. Kai Zing directs him in the wrong direction and the moment he looks back, he ends up making a poor slash with his ant tribe's blade of hope from behind as the upper body of the girl got too heavy after grabbing onto a sword. The whole situation gets hazy for Zing as he wasn't even close to making a one-shot and none of the attributes such as poison and burning aren't working at all. Even though Zing was losing the fight, he was quite happy to see the strength of his old special account as the parasitism fails on Zhang Linyao. Kai Zing doesn't back down for once even after realizing that his abilities wouldn't affect too much on Zhang Linyao since he is already a lot more powerful than him. So, this time, he ends up controlling the scammer guy once again as he makes a run into the forest by stealing Zhang Linyao's sword leaving the girl's body on the ground. On the other hand, Zhang Linyao keeps standing on his own while glancing right at his hand not being able to fathom what has happened to him all of a sudden as he got punked by someone for the first time in his life. Meanwhile, one of the disciples of Perosius informs him about all the important details regarding Kai Zing and his abilities. It may sound surprising, but the girl seems to be knowledgeable of all the attributes and skills of Kai Zing including the fact that he can take a control of any targets around him if it is within his skill range. As a reward, Perosius ends up giving her the Armor of Frost 
but with the condition of making her change in front of him as he promises to cut her interest that she has to pay in half for the week. Perosius might be a leader of his clan members, but he doesn't seem too modest about his behavior towards them as he only focuses on creating an unusual situation with the female members knowing that he grasps unlimited backing and potential. He adds that she has to continue acting like a stripper in front of him in case she wants to pay her debts back in no time. On the other hand, some other hunters were spreading in groups looking for Kaizing while he was drooling on the knife he had recently taken back from Zhang Lin Yao. Some of the hunters are so despicable that they continue to trap themselves while looking for him in the forest, making the whole group an easy target from there which soon gets annoying. Kaizing gets furious after looking into the skill list of the sword due to the incompetence of his enemy the Dazzling Sun who is only focusing on using defensive skills on the sword which is quite useless compared to the attacking skills. Suddenly, he gets found out by countless other hunters this time in just 5 minutes and the moment he tries to take control of a girl magician, he gets sent off flying into the sky as she enters ends up building a shield around her with healing magic. The girl is happy to get her enemy away from the group, but little did she know that our guy had planned the whole formation from the beginning as he makes a Jojo face in the air. He still has the upper hand in the situation as he takes control of a dead beast on the ground but his journey ends as he gets shot with an arrow by the same girl that was chasing Tan Hua for the whole day while Tan Hua keeps on laughing on his own stupidity standing beside her as he drops down on the ground. When he notices Tan Hua in the crowd, he jumps straight on his palms and makes a disappearance through the Freelander's dodge. By doing that, the whole crowd seems to get mad at him because he is the last one who touched their enemy. Then his series of bad luck doesn't end as Kaizing begins cursing Tan Hua after wearing off his VR headset, as he makes a safe relocation in the game. The next time, the whole crowd of people starts chasing Tan Hua as he starts running while carrying the girl that was chasing after her a while ago, after seeing that the jellyfish has disappeared after jumping into his palms. She couldn't help but wonder why he would run while carrying him as he is the only person who can be blamed for the disappearance of their enemy as he continues to say that he doesn't know what happened. The sudden invasion of Kaizing takes him out of the game and the girl plops down on the ground not being able to do anything as she gets mad at him. The moment he regains his senses, Kaizing keeps on shaking him like hell as he dared to chase him with the passers by to fulfill the task of surrounding him. Tan Hua realizes that Kaizing is the jellyfish who is getting chased by everyone and tries to cut off their relationship based on what has happened in the sever previously which gets the whole situation blurrier to Kaizing. It seems that Perosius was given a quest by the goddess in exchange to be overpowered in the near future and one of the tasks was to finish off the fire poison queen ant. But it makes no sense how Kaizing becomes Perosius' enemy just for the reason he was able to beat the boss before he did while he himself didn't want to beat the boss willingly and only met the boss on his way. Since Kaizing has already finished up the boss on his own in less than 70 hours since the server started, it has made him so mad that he has been sending everyone in order to find him out. The only thing that Perosius now focuses on is to finish Kaizing off so he can offer him to the goddess so she can let him progress with his main quest. Zing claims that he wants to meet with him and clear up the misunderstanding to show him what the name Seven Stars really means. After formulating the plan, they head to the village to change jobs but meet up with the same girl who was chasing Tan Hua once again. The moment the girl takes a glance at Kaizing, she blames everything on Tan Hua for not being honest with her while he continues to wonder what his mistake is in the whole situation as he is forced to do everything because his so-called boss said so. Tan Hua explains to Kaizing that they cannot continue to get rid of her because it is impossible since she dropped one level as she died once just because of their mistake. Kaizing uses up his tentacles to do some nasty things once again and takes control of her body which kind of was a letdown for Tan Hua as he was targeting to have a relationship with her. While Kaizing continues to move through her body by checking out all the attributes, Tan Hua keeps on looking straight at him heartbroken knowing that he will never have a chance with her ever again. When they finally walk into the official job change office, the price for changing the job tonight seems to be 550G in total calculating the handling fee, war horse fee, and a knight's suit of armor. When Kaizing tries to convince the receptionist by saying that he just wants to pay the handling fee, the guy says that it is impossible for him to do so without armor and a war horse. After crying about his money for a while, he moves on with his disciple Tan Hua to sell his inventory to finally make some big money. When Kaizing was about to head on someplace else to sell his inventory, they meet a guy selling a job transfer scroll. Tan Hua claims that he might be a scammer as none of the guys who used his scroll found out to be useful as it is full of question marks. But despite all the remarks, Kaizing ends up buying the scroll, which does the same thing as it reveals the question mark just as Tan Hua said but little did. He know that it was about to change his life soon enough as he is about to feel his biggest, 
regret and also his destiny at the same time. Meanwhile, Perosius comes back from the quest items from the first four quests, as the only thing he is missing right now is the boy's dagger. Instead of listening to him, the goddess threatens him to kneel down in front of her claiming that she is a god speaking with him, but he decides to speak against her which makes him witness the grave consequences she was speaking about. Perosius was having a hard time keeping up with the goddess NPC when he ends up disrespecting her while one of his hands turned into earthly stones all of a sudden. Also, the warning doesn't just stop right there, the hand of his stands to grow into a huge pile of earthly stone as it becomes the face of the goddess after a while. When Perosius begs for his life by accepting his mistake swearing, that he will complete his tasks if she lets him go, the goddess decides to forgive him for once and rewards him with a demigod of grade 1000 with the name of nine orifices stone fetus to improve his results by claiming that the dead things can be condensed into fossils. The stone is supposed to absorb the essence which will give birth to the new life which comes and goes as a cycle and Perosius is supposed to follow the guidance of the stone fetus. Then he would go through taking the blood of an ape which will the stone later absorbs to upgrade the stone to a demigod which will then later act as his helper. Perosius thinks to himself that the god might be a stupid one because she has given him a grade 999 element which is worth at least 500,000 but he regains his sense after thinking about him rising to the top. This time his task is not only to catch Kai Zing and also to bring the boy's knife to the goddess to move forward to his main quest, so he also makes I send another 500 people from the gang to guard Zing while he advises her to join with him with three other members. The old guy ends up asking 1000G for his scroll while claiming that it is his only way to get answers from him. Tan Hua thinks that Kai Zing is about to get scammed but since he was below his par, he ends up listening to him as his friend starts to threaten him about the fact that he touched the girl's hand. As the transaction between them ends, it is said that the Wandering works as an agent of God which is considered holy in a way even in the video game world. On the other hand, the interaction between Kai Zing and the old man who was selling the scroll goes nowhere as the man leaves in an instant by saying that he should replace divine power with divine power to proceed with the job transfer. The guy teleports into a shady place where he talks about the request of the Ash King with someone while Zing continues to wonder if he really might not have made the mistake of choosing the path he did. When the trading ends, Zing is left with 11,000 gold and the moment Tan Hua tells him to pay. He decides to leave off the egg of the queen ant to him thinking that he doesn't need something like that. While Kai Zing seemed to be anxious about keeping the ant queen's egg, Tan Hua gets spooked to death by seeing the egg in. His grasp is even though the egg might be on level 600, insect species contain huge evolutionary potential with each of them and talking about money, it might even be worth more than 1 million which is able to multiply more and more into the future. Tan Hua thinks that his so-called boss might not be phased by the fact that the egg is so precious, but he ends up proving himself wrong when Kai Zing starts to stutter while keeping the balance of the egg in his hands. But the situation changes in an instant as the lecture about the egg changes Zing's mind and he decides to keep the egg to himself with the hope of talking to Perosius. By seeing the uncanny motivated sight of Kai Zing, Tan Hua thinks that he might be trying to spare the egg for Perosius which gets him quite worried for some time. But Kai Zing insists that that will never happen because Perosius is never going to have a good ending on his behalf if they ever cross paths somehow in the near future. He leaves Tan Hua and the girl alone so they can level up in the Kingshi village by using up their abilities. While Kai Zing moves on his way, the girl slowly stands on her own feet while trying to keep herself calm and regain her consciousness thinking how come she reached so far inside the village as they were just standing in front of the ant's nest. Zing gets the final chance to wear the God Knight's medal which leaves him with various abilities, but the lame state of the warhorse makes him throw up. Kai Zing knows that riding the horse will only create more trouble for him, so he decides to use his parasitism and symbiosis to make his journey finish faster than is usually possible. While controlling the horse, he only thinks of meeting Perosius and then moves his way to meet Dazzling Sun to get his body back from him which is the most important task on hand for him. When he reaches the middle of the village by rushing in with his horse, he could see nothing but hundreds of people trying to stop him by listening to the order of Perorius. While the whole gang of 500 people surrounds Kai Zing, one of the guys starts asking him about his disappearance for quite a few days as he went unnoticed for a while. The guy gets mad and starts blabbering about how he ruined his last game by causing his gang to fail the siege of the city which made him lose quite an amount of money. But he insists that he still cannot remember him as he has destroyed a lot of people's dreams by ruining their game since he had to reach the top by doing so, which is normal for someone like him. When Kai Zing continues to talk about his sincerity, to have a proper conversation with Perosius, the angry guy claims that he doesn't really have any qualifications to have a talk with their boss while blabbering about the fact that Perosius is blessed by the Earth Goddess and he will soon change his job to God's Walk to be a celebrity in the game. 
When he finishes his speech, a whole lot of people keep on walking in his way while warning him that he will have to end playing the game by the time they end the confrontation between them. When he is rejected to have a chat with Perosius regarding his serious matter, the whole situation was about to go off the cliff as it ends up enraging. Kaizing as he asks about their numbers stating that in that way, he will not need to count their dead bodies when he finishes his wrath. One of the guys in the crowd is an expert and even though Zing is on the other side of their supporting party, he doesn't take time to recognize talent when he sees one. The man has overcome all the hardships indulged in his skills and polished his whole form till the end in order to get an upper hand against his enemies. Kaizing also sees that he doesn't need to take a break at the moment of the skill, God's Crash which ends up providing a skill knockback at the end of it. While slashing down Zing's war horse, the guy introduces himself as the ninth in the leaderboard who is the Dark Dragon Knight, Cold Knife and Fork. When the whole gang of Perosius acts insane and gets desperate to take Zing down, he ends up using the egg of the fire poison queen ant and uses his requisition and symbiosis and god's ride to rectify the queen ant humanoid creature inside the egg. The sight of the ant queen spawn revealing herself gets everyone in the scene flustered as Kai Zing yells that he will now climb to the pinnacle of godhood together by borrowing her power from the core. Now he is able to reflect attacks on the enemies and slash them all at once in half as one of the guys fell to his death while relying on his last skill which is the forbidden binding. The same ability that gave the Ant Queen an upper hand against Zing while he fought her to death for hours in the game as he continued to bait her with the honey in the process. Kai Zing tries to avoid fighting the expert with the bloody scythe explaining that he will come back later to face off with him as he continues on his path by mowing through all the people with his sword. The guy who was commanding the whole crowd meets an untimely death as Zing uses his legs around his head by ripping it apart as he was freestyling with a bowling ball. Soon the guy with a scythe arrives in front of him not leaving him be and Zing changes body with the girl's one to eat up all her skills in the process as the queen ant spawn knocks him down on the ground. The moment the guy was about to attack Zing, the mount that he got from the queen ant's egg attacked the guy trying to protect her master. He uses up gluttony to devour and upgrade all while keeping his shadow clone active reaching him up to a much higher level as he switches up his perspective. He keeps on jumping head to head controlling one of the knights in the area to finish up her friend by using his own sword but decides to take his leave soon enough as the knight gets burned to a crisp by all the fire mages. The unfathomable scenery in front of the guy with the scythe gets more and more unbelievable and insane as time continues to pass slowly leveling Zing up to a higher level than usual. Considering the well-being of the guy in front of him, Kai Zing gives him a chance to keep his ranking to himself at 9th placement by avoiding clashing with him. When Zing begins his countdown of 3 seconds for him to think about it, the guy makes a rush escape listening to him by using the teleportation scroll in a split second as it was inevitable to lose while standing in front of someone like him. When the guy vanishes somewhere into a lonely cliff somewhere in the world, he continues to wonder if Kai Zing is still a human, as he saw the sight of him multitasking operating two avatars at the same time while precisely finding the two most needed skills in the hundreds released by the players down on the ground. Also, the fact that he is paired with the most rubbish race while having the most exquisite skills has become so incomprehensible, Kai Zing became someone who can fight off every single attack while dodging every attack from his attackers making him an unbeatable opponent in front of everyone. The fact that he also cannot be ambushed makes him even scarier than anyone can imagine, which makes him a monster as it all makes sense in the end. The guy continues to smile on his own thinking if he is the same kind in reality, so incredible and dashing at the same time. Meanwhile, Perosius makes his entrance in the scene with his pet ancient elephant claiming that Zing should be going with him to the place where the goddess is residing. Kai Zing claims that he had been waiting for Perosius as he wanted to talk to him alone from the beginning, which almost didn't work out. Suddenly, Kai Zing's prolonged enemy Zhang Lin Yao arrives at the scene with Kai Zio Man which makes him wonder if she really recognizes her as him or not. After thinking for a minute, Zing understands that the severity of the situation might go out of hand if he doesn't move away from the place as Perosius is at the same level as him while Jang Lin Yao might cause problems more than enough while other dead players will be resurrecting soon enough. But when Jang Lin Yao decides to act cool by running his mouth, Kai Zing makes a rushing run toward him with the sword in his hand to clarify the huge gap between their strength to teach him a lesson. Previously, everyone seems to be obsessed with Zio Man's presence in the game for being a perfect celebrity but it wasn't the case for her at all. Zio Man's mother was fed up with her gaming habits even after she turned into a celebrity, and she seemed quite obsessed with playing with Kai Zing and felt out of luck when she started feeling as if he has changed his game without even letting her know in advance. She started feeling as if he considered her a burden and starts contemplating her own life thinking about what else she had other than a good-looking body that can hold her above everyone. 
She isn't even good at gaming which is her favorite activity to engage with which was slowly improving with the help of Kai Zing. She was truly impressed by his unfathomable skills and abilities which led her to reveal her real identity to him. But unlike anyone else, he didn't care much about her identity as he himself is a loser in real life who is just playing games to escape from his reality. The only way for Zing was to reveal his true self in the virtual world and that is how Xiao Man was able to connect with him in an instant to live in the world of freedom. When Xiao Man gets too desperate looking for 7 stars Aka Zing, he informs all of her assistants to look for someone using his usernames to find him out. She even got partnered with various esports to look for him thoroughly which was proven to be useless in the end. She even went as far as trying to turn Zing into an esports star but fails miserably as the company rejects her. But the whole situation in the present flips out in an instant the moment Kai Zing makes his attack targeting Xiao Man instead of targeting Zhang Lin Yao. But instead of getting shocked by the intention of Zing, Xiao Man thinks that he might be using her as bait and starts smiling on her own but in reality, Zing was thinking of chopping her up feeling that she might not recognize him from the start. So he can do that first and focus on the others. When Kai Zing notices the idiot smiling in front of him, it makes him want to send her back to the resurrection point so he can let loose all of his abilities and fight with his real enemies. On the other hand, the flame spread by Zhang Lin Yao ends up giving Zing the ability to be resistant to fire which gets his attention back on his enemy, and now all he wants is his body back from him as he finally gets excited. While they were busy fighting, Xiao Man was worrying about Perosius watching over them and after searching for a while she notices that Zing is reaching for the others to attack Perosius in the chaos. Xiao Man focuses on giving him an opportunity to make his move successful, so she begins attracting everyone's attention by making calls for help which might get them distracted. Xiao Man's plan work out instantly as Zhang Lin Yao falls down on the ground with the unfathomable flick made by Zing, but he doesn't go down directly with one leg hit. While he thinks about changing the plan, Xiao Man gets an earth elemental spirit from Perosius so she can shut her mouth after feeling that she is protected by something. Kai Zing ends up making a cunning and manipulating proposal to knock down Zhang Lin Yao saying that he can get out of the situation one way, which is by paying him 20,000 gold as Perosius has hired him with 10,000 gold switching up the target on Perosius. But instead of accepting his proposition, Zhang Lin Yao decides to keep his spirit alive by chopping Zing's legs off which turns into a total failure as he gets kicked in his stomach throwing him off in a far distance. When the vital starts to slow down for our man, Zhang Lin Yao, he only thinks of deleting the account and going offline which gets taken into an advantage by Zing as he keeps on manipulating him against Perosius saying that he is the one who helped him to overcome the strength gap. His manipulation was getting close to fruition as soon as the mammoth that Perosius was riding gets manipulated by Zing as he was hurting it by using a spearhead. Perosius gets a hold of the situation and uses his mammoth to use the war trample. Then he switches his target onto Xiao Man who then explains that she has already got a hold of his game ID which ends up catching him off guard. The notarization made by Zing ends up profiting through him as it shows the truth on the detection radar, and Zhang Lin Yao offers him 5000 to join hands with him also offering him future opportunities at the same time. Even though his plan was coming to fruition, Perosius wasn't as dumb enough as Zhang Lin Yao that he wouldn't be able to fathom that Zing is the one who is playing the mind game from the beginning. Zhang Lin Yao then finally focuses on Perosius thinking that he is the one playing sneaky tricks throughout the whole event of reaching the top spot. The first step towards Zing's goal is fully completed as he finalizes the deal with his own true enemy. For some valid reasons, Xiao Man's requests weren't working on Kai Zing as he constantly rejects her offer to be her friend again. He keeps on insisting that they shouldn't be adding each other as before which might even end up with them getting close to each other once again. Kai Zing recognizes that he might have a tweak to end the fight, so he proposes to create an illusion to make it look like a real battle between them was forming while they continue to get near the golem he is riding, and Zhang Lin Yao keeps on listening to his advice without even thinking twice at the moment. When the provocation created by Zing works out on its own, they both plan on subduing Perosius by creating a distraction making it look like both of them are chasing each other and fighting with each other. Zing uses the opportunity to test out the strength of Zhang Lin Yao's vital spot as it reveals that he might have some kind of legendary rank getting him the ability of HP recovery talent. Even though most of the skills stacked by Zhang Lin Yao are overpowered but some of the skills are weirdly collected which makes no sense. Sensing that he might get attacked by Zhang Lin Yao, Zing plans on moving on his own to avoid all the attacks. While Zhang Lin Yao plans to eradicate both of his enemies knowing that one slight attack 
made by his enemy can get him down as they have a big difference when it comes to skill and characterization. Kai Zing flashes through the path in front of Zhang Linyao while he continues to think that he will be the one coming at the top when both of his opponents lose the fight due to exhaustion which will only take mere vital damage in an instant. When Perosius ends up realizing both of their plans, he unveils his summoning skill to reveal the huge golem totem which comes up through the ground and grows up to sky-high height. Even though Zing was planning to make his move from a far distance, judging the fact that he can dive right into his opponent, the gravity earth attribute of the golem totem doubles down on the gravity which creates an unstable situation for Zing to make a proper attack. But Jiang Linyao isn't someone who is prepared to let go of his enemy despite the rocky situation. He keeps on running forward into Perosius as the rock judgment keeps on throwing rocks at him by locking its target. Jiang Linyao finalizes his attack by using his great sun blazing slash making an overly flamed sword attack on Perosius, but it doesn't work as Perosius blocks it with his four direction rock shield. On the other hand, Zing also fails to make his attack fruitful as even his seven star sneak attack gets noticed and blocked by Perosius. Throughout the whole ruckus, Zio Man was trying to make a conversation with Kai Zing saying that he might need her help but he continues to make her understand that she is in a hostage position, so she shouldn't be communicating with him as freely as she is doing right now. Also, the sneak attack doesn't work on Perosius for the fact that all of his senses are sharpened as hell which Kai Zing never expected from the start as he begins to claim that the people who opposed him face tragic deaths. Then Jiang Linyao forces through the rocky edge shield of Perosius and his attack breaks through it while hitting the mammoth under it providing no damage to Perosius at all. Kai Zing thinks of using the situation to his advantage as he lets go of the Ant Queen's body and makes the Golem Totem his target. But little did he know that he was going to turn into a victim in the situation as Perosius activates his god's protection. Through the Golem Totem teleporting Zing into a void space where he finally meets the godly NPC the goddess calling him the little one. Kai Zing gets into a sticky situation meeting the goddess not knowing what is going to be ahead of him and keeps on stating to the goddess that she should perform the symbiosis with him otherwise it will make the situation look weird for him. But the situation turns into total chaos even for the goddess as soon as she tries to touch Zing which ends up firing up the hero heart reflecting all her powers away from him. Something called for Zing stating that he should make a run for it from behind him and it seems to be a huge jellyfish that spawned behind him. He couldn't fathom the incident even a bit as he never expected to encounter a god at around level 20 as it has never happened to him in any previous games. The goddess gets trapped by the jellyfish god as it entraps her from behind by tying its tentacles all over her body creating a sticky situation. Kaizing finally feels like a dumb bastard after a long time as he couldn't make a sense of what the jellyfish god was even talking about. But he ends up solving the problem by removing his symbiosis from the golem totem which returns him to his normal state shifting the symbiosis back onto the queen ant's body once again. Perosius couldn't understand how Zing has managed to escape from the goddess's grasp and activate his unfathomable huge shadow clone. While Zing runs like a clown through the middle of the street carrying on Zio man on his back who couldn't even fathom what trouble they currently are into right now. Kai Zing finds himself in a bad situation as he has no mount to make his moves quicker to escape from the shadow clone and is unable to give a buff to Zio Man to improve the situation as he can only perform symbiosis one at a time, while the return scroll also proves to be ineffective as he is engaged in a combat situation. Meanwhile, the huge clone of the goddess was trying her best to capture Zing with her Rocky Mountain abilities while fighting back against the huge jellyfish god. Throughout the whole troubling scenario, Zio Man was pretending that they are in a romantic movie as they used to spend their days training together. Zing realizes that he must help the jellyfish god to attain some kind of advantage in his future and begins to think of various ways to protect it. After thinking for a while by judging all the symbiosis and parasitizing situation, Zing decides to make a contact with Tan Hua who is vastly concerned about the current state of the village but ends up proving to be useless at the end of the call as the archer with him has already gone offline. Realizing that talking to Tan Hu will be useless, Kai Zing gets desperate to get out of the situation and he thinks of kicking the hell out of his friend when he gets out of trouble with the monster who is still behind him. But the information provided by Tan Hua gets him to think of using the body of Zio Man as he creates a symbiosis with her to get into the same mental spirit bridge with the big jellyfish while Zio Man continues to moan and make weird facial reactions on her face. Zio Man and Zing both transfer into the mental spirit world where he is able to create a meeting with the big jellyfish in order to communicate with him. Instead of being concerned about Zio Man standing naked on the mental bridge, the big jellyfish takes an entry and praises Zing for his skills and explains how the mental attachment between them is working out between each race. But Zing's attempt proves to be useless as there is nothing that he can help the big jellyfish with because of the huge level gap he has right now. 
although he realizes that there might a mission for him to look for only after reaching a certain level and he keeps on focusing on that as the symbiosis ends abruptly. Even though Zio Man seems to be focused on her own state, Zing realizes that the wrath of the goddess still didn't end yet as he looks above the sky. He makes a quick run by carrying Zio Man once again trying to escape from the hellhole of a situation. On the other hand, Perosius is still getting chased by the clown Jang Lin Yao while Perosius frustrates over the fact that he cannot control his body meaning that the Descend God's skill had taken control over his whole body for a while. While he was doubting that he will ever get another task from the goddess, he was given two of them at once and the most valuable one is the one that is running currently carrying the most valuable rewards and attributes. However, the risk of Kaizing being vulnerable in the whole scenario piles up for the final trouble as Perosius explains the tactics of Zing to him clearing up the whole situation related to his god weapon. Perosius leaves the scene, telling Jang Lin Yao that either Zing has hacked his account, or he did it which ended up creating a mind-boggling situation and if Jang Lin Yao can make his wish of meeting Zing. In real life, he will be rewarding him greatly for it. Now for the final time, the target of Jang Lin Yao falls upon Kai Zing once again as he gets offline from the game furiously trying to find his rival with the madness exfoliating on his face. Jang Lin Yao leaves his home without listening to his father and uncle who were chatting in the living room and contacts his friend Zio who to arrange his people for his upcoming task. His father explains the man that his kid isn't mature yet so he shouldn't be taking it too harshly. But since his father is his boss, the man decides to take it easy by calling Zhang Lin Yao's behavior humble and cool for the time being. Meanwhile, Kai Zing reaches the end of the running point inside the forest to make sure that Zio Man is safe. While moving through the trees, Kai Zing elaborates on the fact that the guy that she was with is none other than just an imposter which she claims that she knows about it already. He asks him about the reason why she is with him even after knowing the truth but she claims that it is all good since she is with him right now. As soon as Zio Man starts to bicker with him, Zio Man drops her inside a bush by saying that he doesn't care about him as he runs away from the spot. Kaizing then finally leaves the game world satisfied that he has done everything he wanted from the beginning, including tricking his enemy and provoking the boss when he still ran away with the money. But the moment he regains his consciousness in the real world, Jang Lin Yao enters the house of Tan Hua kicking off the door on the way. The sight of Jang Lin Yao and his men entering the room gets Tan Hua, and Kaizing flabbergasted. Jang Lin Yao then grabs his sole enemy by his t-shirt and knocks him off the ground with the intention of teaching him a lesson as he continues to hold onto his VR headset which is his last hope in life. The situation makes Zing realize that the sword might be the only reason why a clown like Jang Lin Yao found out about his identity due to the account binding situation. Jang Lin Yao orders all his men to keep on beating Zing down which ends up reaching Tan Hua as well as he was trying to protect the both of them by shouting and calling for help. But all Kai Zing is trying to do is save his helmet from the attack as it is the last hope for him and his own family in the moment Jang. Lin Yao touches his hand in order to get it out of his grasp. Kai Zing changes his reaction and makes an unfathomable attack on his enemy as it triggers him his troubling memories from his childhood. He sees a flashback of his father helping someone resulting in their house being taken away. And now his sister is still in a coma, all he could do is watch helplessly. Not only that but also, he was scammed and cheated by everyone that he met in life which makes his attack so fierce on Jang Lin Yao that he keeps on biting his ears and tearing through his eyes. But the situation grows so intense for his men that one of them named Lao Jang ends up stabbing him from behind which tears through the flesh of Kai Zing. Tan Hu grabs onto his friend bleeding out and shouts for the others to call an ambulance for him as the knife ended up tearing through his heart. However, even in this troubling situation, all Kai Zing cares about is his helmet which is the last hope of his family while Jang Lin Yao keeps calling for his men to call an ambulance for himself. Even the men of Jang Lin Yao were able to notice that their friend has stabbed Kai Zing through the heart, but their boss seems to only care about his wounded eye as he orders them to focus on him only. On the other hand, the old man who handed Kai Zing the scroll after receiving gold from him seems to be talking about something called Ash's power to help Zing complete his profession change from Ash's wanderer's last crucial step as he dies above Ash. It seems that Kai Zing has died and transmigrated into the game world somehow truly shockingly. And when the inventory opens on its own, the skeleton arm-like item grabs onto him causing an accident to match his fate taking him to the right path. While the old man thought that the process might have taken longer, the accident that let Kai Zing die made it happen faster than he predicted as he calls it Kai Zing's fate with nobody can ever manipulate. He believes that he has made a choice and will be forced to walk on the right path, but the problem is that the soul flesh bone plan is exposed too early which will make the gods pay attention to him leaving no way to process through without it. 
the jellyfish god believes that it is fine if that happens and Kaizeng isn't the only person who was revealed but the gods now have to reveal themselves as well. While Tan Hu was crying uncontrollably while holding the dead body of Kaizeng, a magic circle appears around Zing's dead body as its space straight flowed into the sky teleporting his jellyfish body close to him only to return to his main body. Even the jellyfish form of Kaizeng could see through everything that he got stabbed and died which made his soul come through his body. But he couldn't help but wonder why his soul was in the game's jellyfish only realizing that he should be returning to his main body as soon as possible. The big jellyfish advises him that he should return to his body quickly as the weakness can disperse him soon if he doesn't meet the requirements. Zing desperately uses up his symbiosis on his own body and wakes up on his own as the stab knife gets out from his body on its own while the healing gets completed automatically. He calls out for Tan Hua to see if the jellyfish tentacles have grown back on his head but none of the people in the room seems to be responding as they are all affected by time. Meanwhile, Kai Zing notices that the huge jellyfish god has already made his position out in the world telling him to continue and complete his profession change to drive his destiny as the whole world is making a way for him. Also, the old man adds that the hardest condition has been achieved for him and now all he has left to do is activate using the divine power to replace the divine power since the game and reality have overlapped against each other which will make him purely overpowered against anybody. Meanwhile, it is vastly rumored that many international organizations such as the UN, the five major council members of the world, global, central banks, and the continental financial union are currently joining in something called gods which might sound like a fantasy and nonsense to almost every layman, but not to Jamie who is a designer involved in the development of God as he knows that all the settings and data they have made in the past three years are still stored in the computer while the real ancient gods isn't something that is online at all. It is purely a mind control system with fully synchronized brain waves making it realistic to bug free modeling and rendering details which made the occurrence of a god level NPC who suddenly appeared without any design formation. It is basically called a supercomputer leading the world in technology and Jamie is trying his best to unravel the secret for the betterment of his homeland. But all of a sudden, Jamie finds himself in a space suit while his boss calls him out saying that they are going 10,000 meters underground where the computer room is, and it will solve all of their doubts upon arriving. He hands him a shovel poo as they finally arrive someplace which is filled with lava while the technological advancement fluid is flooding inside a huge humanoid's head through a helmet-like system. And that's how the uh, first part of this man wins. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word part 2 also subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and like the video, but most important, leave a comment, until the next video.